Hello, and thank you for joining us for this encore presentation of one of Viking's most special journeys. Our friends at All Travel look forward to building the trip of your dreams. And at Viking, we look forward to welcoming you on board. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Traveling Virtually with Viking. I want to give a special thank you to our travel advisors for inviting you to attend this presentation today. And today we're so happy to do an exclusive culinary journey along the Mississippi. So I'd like to welcome Michelle Segaser, Viking's Vice President of Sales and National Accounts as we take a culinary journey. Thank you, Mike. Isn't this great? Finally, you got me on one of these and I'm thrilled to be here today. Thank you for joining us. And again, thank you to our travel advisors who invited you to this special event. I'm thrilled to have not only Mike with me today, but Richard Sims, our Director of National Accounts. So all in a bow tie and seersucker. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, I required it today. This, this uh, yeah, I put the pearls on in a cup of tea, so I'm all good right go. now from Seattle. But Richard is newer to Viking, and um, but boy, not new to the Mississippi or the area. We have kind of crossed roots. He's an Alabama boy, and my father was um, from Alabama, but we're very opposing on our football teams, right, Richard? That is <laughs> so absolutely 100% correct. He wants to hear a little War Eagle, and I want to hear a little World Tide, but I guess we get <laughs> through this whole Southern presentation together. Those of you who have traveled with Viking before, thank you so much for your great support. Of course, you know how large the world of Viking is now. For those of you who are new to us, this is just a portion of the Viking world map. We have rivers, oceans, and our wonderful new expedition ships. Of course, today you're here to hear about our new program on the Mississippi with these new fantastic itineraries. I've been with Viking 17 years and it feels like all 17 years we've talked about going on the Mississippi. In actuality, it's been about eight years that we've been trying to plan this whole experience for you all. Uh, it will be opening up in 2022. I will tell you, space is already tight, right, Richard, for 2022? And it 2023 is. is open, right? Yeah. I mean, and the one that kind of surprises me is the longest one, America's Great River, sold out faster than anything else. So some of you are really looking forward to a modern view of the Mississippi through the beautiful new ship, the Viking Mississippi, on this magnificent river. So Richard, this is your world. This is your homeland, more or less. You're a good Southern boy. And uh, I'd love you to take us through some of these ports that we're traveling to, some of your recommendations. And then you're just going to make us awfully hungry through the rest of this. I, yes, <laughs> I think I will. I uh, definitely will. And, you know, thank you. It, it's such a great itinerary. And this is definitely, you know, the heart of the South. Um, you know, this is a great itinerary. And it's one that I think people are going to uh, be surprised by some of the, the lesser known cities that they may not have heard of that uh, I think it's going to really bring a lot of that charm and grace uh, that the South's known for those beautiful oak trees, you know, draped in moss and, you know, quaint little beautiful historic homes, of course, great food, uh, just a great ambiance and atmosphere. It's everything you imagine it's going to be and more, right? The history, uh, those trees to me are always in my mind, how spectacular they are. Yeah, uh, and yeah. the homes, the architecture, it, it's a trip for whatever you love, music, food, and architecture, and history, of course, of the U.S. Uh, is a big part of this whole itinerary. Actually, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've got some great resources to, to get you excited about the journey even before you travel. And we've got recommended uh, book titles that, uh, you know, definitely take place uh, in this, you know, period or, you know, the area region that we'll be traveling through. It's going to have uh, recommendations for films as well. And it'll give you a little flavor and get, again, get you really excited after you've made that uh, deposit and uh, booked your cruise on Mississippi. Uh, it'll, it'll definitely keep you entertained and uh, just really educating, again, on this amazing um, you know, part of the Mississippi River, the lower uh, portion of Mississippi. And, you know, like you said, Michelle, you know, starting in places like Memphis uh, that has such a oh, rich history and so much diversity. So much, right? Yeah. And, and coming down to Vicksburg and Natchez. Uh, and the then history in there, the Civil War history, Natchez yeah. and those magnificent homes. Oh, my gosh. That's yes. something I'll never forget. Absolutely. And then you get into, you know, some of the lesser known charms like St. Francisville and Darrow. Uh, of course, Baton Rouge is in there as well before ending in New Orleans. And, you know, definitely want to point out, you can go either uh, south, like what we're going to be doing today, Memphis to New Orleans, or you can take this itinerary in reverse and go from New Orleans to Memphis. And so 
uh, regardless of which direction you go, and we're already seeing it with the bookings, aren't we, is people are wanting to book pre or post land extensions. And so oh, yes. I know the majority of our bookings already have uh, booked those pre or post because they want the uh, longer extension in these uh, amazing uh, anchor cities for this itinerary in Memphis and New Orleans. Well, it's hard to choose. That's why they're taking them on both ends, I think, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll yeah, pretend to start in Memphis today. Yeah. Yeah, and Memphis has so much to offer. You know, honestly, it's got, uh, you know, it's kind of the home of the, of the blues. You've got amazing street uh, where you've got so many amazing, uh, you know, places to go and listen to those blues. But it's also, you know, home to a lot of great country, um, you know, music. It's Sun Studios and going over and doing a tour there, and you know, where Johnny Cash got his start, you know, Elvis Presley. Of course, you have Graceland. Um, but, you know, we're, we're also talking about food uh, today, and that's where we want to focus because, you know, Memphis is known for one thing and one thing only, uh, and that's ribs, and it's a, it's barbecue, and it's a unique way of, pre of presenting. Look at that. <laughs> you know, absolutely delicious, and, you know, it's called dry rub, uh, you know, dry ribs, and what that simply means is that the rub that they create, the spices that they mix together, and they, uh, they, they rub on the meat, preferably you want to let it sit overnight, uh, 24 hours, and, and really let that meat absorb uh, those spices. But what you're going to taste is you're going to um, not be overpowered by barbecue sauce um, like you're that traditional um, you know, barbecue ribs that you taste in, in other parts of the country. You're going to have that opportunity to really taste the flavors, uh, taste the smokiness of the, the meat as it, uh, as, it's, as it's cooked over maybe hickory wood, uh, apple, pecan even. And if you want that barbe barbecue sauce, you're definitely going to have it. It's going to be a little bit less sweet, but more spicy because they actually put some of that same rub in that uh, tomato-based barbecue sauce that they're known for. And so a lot of people, they eat it dry, just like what you see here. So when it comes off that smoker, it's got that rich mahogany uh, you know, look to it. And that's where that sugar that's, it, that's inside that, that rub recipe is caramelizing. It's really, um, you know, mm. turning that beautiful mahogany. To get that crust on it, right? It's beautiful. It has a little crunch and just, you, you just yeah. taste it. It just really bursts with flavor. And again, that barbecue sauce is on the side. You know, there's over a hundred different barbecue places in Memphis to choose from. Wow. There's some, uh, some really great ones out there. One of our favorites um, is, is Central Barbecue. And Central Barbecue actually has a recipe available uh, for their dry rub. And this is something that you can cook at home. It's also something we're going to be doing today as we take those culinary journeys. I actually give you uh, a, a recipe uh, of a dish that you can uh, make right there in the comfort of your home, own home and get a taste of this uh, itinerary as you travel uh, uh, on the, you know, the heart of the Delta. So when you look at this, uh, you know, the, the two, re two ingredients that jump out is that brown sugar. That's yes. what's going to that caramelized. You can use um, uh, sugar in the raw as well. And that's what I particularly use. Is sugar oh, I love that because it has a real mapley to it as well, it right? It does. It does. Yeah. And it just, it just, you know, again, it gives you that beautiful mahogany color, but that salt and that using kosher salt, what that does, it it really opens up the pores of the meat um, that salt does. And it allows the spices to, to really, you know, uh, be absorbed by the meat. So as the ribs sweat, as they come up to temperature and start to cook and they start to sweat, they're able to absorb um, those spices. And that's what makes it so delicious. And now we will be forwarding the link to yep. this whole recorded virtual travel right now to your travel advisor by the end of the week. So don't worry if you didn't get the recipe of any of the other things Richard's going to talk about. We'll be sending them off to your travel advisor so they can get them to you um, this week. And boy, that would be great for this weekend. And the yes. beautiful scenic cruising on the Mississippi. Um, those of you who've traveled on the European rivers with us, it's a very different experience in the U.S. You don't have the mansions right on the water like you do uh, all of the beautiful scenery you see in Europe. But you have a lot of beautiful fall foliage through the fall time. There's a lot of local life to see. And on a magnificent ship like this, this is the new modern way of sailing on the Mississippi. And we'll get into the ship a little bit later after Richard makes you more hungry in each of these ports on this itinerary. Oh, Vicksburg, fantastic. Yeah, Vicksburg, such a great city. Um, you know, as you get into uh, you know, more of the middle part of Mississippi, obviously amazing history here with the Civil War. You know, uh, Abraham Lincoln identified this immediately when the Civil War broke out, that this was really the key to the South. If you take Vicksburg, it would break the back of the Confederacy. And a lot of people forget about the importance of this in the war. And uh, so a lot of history here, obviously Vicksburg uh, National Park uh, is yes. – probably the big site here, but you know, it gets lost because the same day that Vicksburg surrendered, 
uh, to the Union forces, well, Gettysburg uh, was, was taking place, and, uh, and the Union won, obviously, that decisive battle. But this, this battle here at Vicksburg sometimes gets lost in the annals of history. But uh, it, it sure does. And, and I yeah. think one day we're going to have you come back and do an entire tour down this river of historical Civil War sites because you're so good at this. Well, I appreciate that. And it, it, well, it, it really is important history. And, you know, you don't want to forget your history. And I think, uh, you know, as you travel down, you're going to be able to see that in all these different amazing ports along the river. And of course, you know, the culinary journey continues as we talked about barbecue in Memphis, you know, you don't forget that you're going to still have barbecue just about every single port and, and definitely. It's all a little different, right? It's this not is a little different, all the dry know? rub like Memphis. Yeah. On, on the banks of the Mississippi, you know, uh, pulled pork and, and, and pork sandwich, barbecue pork sandwiches are really, uh, you know, a staple. And that's something you're going to be able to definitely continue to taste. This one's a little different as one of the recipes that we feature uh, as well that has that coleslaw added to it. A lot of people love that coleslaw flavor and what it brings, um, you know, to the overall taste as you're, you know, having a sandwich. I personally don't like it with, with, with coleslaw. I like to, again, I'm more of like to taste that smoke um, of, of whatever the flavor would that uh, was used for the smoking process and taste the spices, but to each their own, that's the beauty of barbecue. You'd have it. It looks with, terrific. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, you know, Vicksburg is up on a bluff uh, overlooking the river. And so any, any of the restaurants that we would recommend and when you're dining here, you're going to get a wide range of cuisine as well. This is not just Southern food here in Vicksburg. They've got a really an eclectic uh, mix of, of different uh, types of food. You're going to actually start being have uh, some great seafood restaurants here as well. But the rooftop restaurants, you know, uh, eating outside, eating on top of the rooftop with incredible views, that's what makes Vicksburg so special when you're dining there. And, oh, now you're killing me. <laughs> yeah, now I'm killing you because we have to at least feature one dessert. Um, and yes. one dessert we're featuring is the Mississippi mud pie, the famous Mississippi mud pie. Uh, you know, it's definitely, you know, pure decadence. Uh, you know, lots of ch chocolate there. You've got the chicory, um, you know, coffee ice cream. Coffee. Oh, wow. You've got even some shaved uh, pecans there on top. Absolutely delicious. So uh, something, again, that you can make from the comfort of your home. Prep time, can you believe it? For that, you look at that and you think, oh my gosh, that's going to take a while. To Looks have all day, yeah. Only 20 minutes prepare time to, to make this Mississippi mud pie. So it really- I'm going to make all of you watching him, hold him to that 20 minutes, because I know me just prepping would be a half an hour on that. <laughs> we'll okay, move so on to we'll, Natchez. We'll anyway, change the prep time to 30 minutes then. You know? <laughs> Thank you. as difficult as it looks, you know? And that's the fun thing, right? While we're all kind of, you know, Absolutely. at home, what a great opportunity to, you know, try some of these different recipes, not only all the places that Viking sells, um, sales to, but also, of course, you know, this one featuring today. Yeah. And, and I in Natchez, the beautiful, beautiful mansions here. It's what I always remember of this port. And we've got some special shore excursions planned on this one as well, right? Yeah, we've got, you know, Natchez is, you're just walking through a historical, you know, site, um, you know, absolutely amazing, all the historic homes here. I think there's over 100 um, homes that are on the historical register, uh, Yes, thousand total. So you really start to get that, you know, that Southern charm here in Natchez. Um, of course, in the springtime, you've got the zellias blooming, which is a great time to be in the South um, if wow. you want to uh, be in that colorful time of year. But again, it's absolutely about the atmosphere that's, you know, being able to be created. And, you know, we're featuring, you know, one of the dishes there in Natchez. Oh, that's got to be fried green tomatoes, right? Fried green tomatoes. Absolutely. Oh. Great movie. Um, but fried green it's tomatoes. It's a great movie. You're going to have, again, more uh, southern dishes here. Uh, you know, you're getting into pecan country. So lots of uh, amazing pecan dishes for desserts even. So, You've got a good variety of cuisine. Uh, of course, the restaurants and all those historical areas are fantastic uh, to dine in. They all have a little story to tell. Some, they say, are even haunted. So when you dine in, in Natchez, it's definitely uh, something that um, I, I think will be one of the highlights of your cruise. And you were saying, fantastic. yeah, you were talking about that culinary tour. We've got an amazing culinary tour. This is the only city we're featuring a culinary tour, but this is an optional short experience that you can choose from. And what it is, is well, we're going to take you to two amazing, beautiful, uh, restored, historic homes. And then we're going to take you to the famous restaurant 1818 and have lunch and oh, wow. different Southern, uh, you know, uh, drinks and beverages um, that uh, originated in the South, uh, like a mint julep. So you're going to have a wonderful culinary experience and uh, beverage tasting uh, while also getting the historical perspective of visiting these beautiful uh, restored homes. I'm going to have my first Sazerac next time we, we go into this area as you've explained it to me today. 
Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so oh, and these trees are exactly what I think of in that view. When I, I, it's been a long time, I must admit, since I sailed on the Mississippi, it certainly wasn't with Viking and it was a long time ago, but these are all these beautiful ports and the photography, my goodness, any of you want to bring your cameras along and, and you know what you're doing when you're shooting with the shadows and the sunlight in the South is so spectacular with the weeping willows. And it's certainly gone with the wind, isn't it, Richard? <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, to me, that's what makes the South one of my favorites is not only the zellies in the spring, but the beautiful oak trees. Um, oh, they're beautiful, yeah. Oh, they are. And the just the moss straight down. Uh, again, it's great. Amazing. Absolutely. But it creates an amazing atmosphere as you walk through the historic, again, very historic town. Uh, beautiful, charming, uh, easy to walk. Great restaurants, again, for lunch that you can enjoy. You know, getting out again into the um, beautiful countryside and historic homes. It really is a charming place. Again, one of those places a lot of people uh, are just not going to know a lot about of, but will definitely be one of the highlights of when it's all said and done. Yeah. Lovely. And, and from a dining standpoint, you know, you're in Louisiana now, so you're going to definitely start getting those Creole, you know. Uh, Spices. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, know, uh, you know, Cajun cuisine and stuff. And so here, you know, it's all about, uh, you know, shrimp creole. You can do, you know, um, a couple of different variety of ways, but shrimp creole, you start to get those, uh, those really true Cajun flavors and tastes um, that uh, the region's known for. Uh, you're going to start, you know, seeing uh, crawfish on menus, uh, po lots of po' boys, and uh, you're going to really start getting that little bit more of a spicier flavor. Uh, than what you had on the, uh, you know, uh, the, the Mississippi ports and even in Memphis. So it's going to be really enjoyable and definitely shrimp. Oh. Creole, uh, you know, one of the things I think you could make at home that's really easy. I actually just had this Friday night. My wife made a uh, jambalaya uh, for us. It's, it's such a great dish. You can make it with shrimp, chicken, of uh, course, crawfish. Uh, you can, uh, you know, really pep it up, which we encourage you to do with uh, andouille sausage, which really is this unique sausage in of, of its own. Uh, but it you really can is, yeah. jambalaya with whatever meats that interest you. And this is really kind of that, that uh, core dish that, uh, you know, Louisiana and that Cajun um, you know, cuisine is known for. It's because it's such a great comfort food, but it's something that you can make year round. Uh, again, that brings out uh, the flavors of the region. Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Home of LSU. <laughs> yeah. Home of LSU. Uh, you know, there's a, Great uh, Cajun um, uh, cultural center here that we uh, definitely recommend if you want to, you know, hear some uh, folk tales of, uh, you know, the Cajun Creole history, uh, taste some of the flavors uh, of, of, of Creole as well. Uh, you know, great Creole Cajun music uh, here as well. Something that you can do, it's right there on the campus of LSU. Great little restaurants here in Baton Rouge. Uh, you know, there's uh, one especially that I absolutely love that has the most incredible po' boys um, that you're ever going to have. And it's right there next to, um, you know, the campus of uh, LSU, but there's also, uh, you know, crawfish etouffee, you know, again, as the farther you head south, the more crawfish starts creeping up and more and more of the, uh, the dishes um, that you've got there. Uh, one of my favorite places, though, um, I was just uh, reading here, um, is the Chimes, and they've got some of the best po' boys, but they also have incredible shri uh, shrimp etouffee, but there's also poor boy, Poor boy, poor boy Lloyd's. Uh, that's a hard. Uh, that is. What is that? Poor boy Lloyd's. That also has great po, uh, po boys. So that's a restaurant. Okay. Yeah, po boys are the way to go. Uh, you know that's that, that uh, crawfish etouffee, shrimp etouffee, uh, crawfish boils. You know, you may have more of an experience of a crawfish boil at the Cajun Heritage Center, but you know, to me. This is kind of the, 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 you know, the juiciness and the deliciousness of the itinerary. It's really getting down in that Cajun Creole cuisine. Yeah, absolutely. It's so bursting with flavor and it's so unique and you can't, you just can't replicate it anywhere else. Um, you really just have to have those, you know, those local ingredients. And oh, the Holy okay. Trinity here. Now you're going to get the into some Trinity, real you know, tough fighting areas, right? That's right. I mean, this is, you know, this is the foundation of all Cajun Creole cuisine are these three vegetables, you know, bell peppers, onions, and celery. And alone, they don't really stand out. They don't jump out at you. But when you put them together and you cook them together and you uh, simmer them down, they pack a punch and they just release such an amazing um, flavor and taste. This is the flavor profile of what goes in 
all the A2 phase, the gumbo, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, oh gosh, the jambalaya. I mean, the this, jambalaya, especially, that's what I know it for. Yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, the coffee. And then the making stuff. your roux, right? You have to make that you right. Know, a it, fine it, Southern it, girl can only make a good roux, right? That's <laughs> right. And, you know, you've heard the slogan, you know, um, you know, first you start with a roux. And then, you know, once you get that roux going and you add in the Holy Trinity, you know, now you you can create so many, um, you know, different uh, Cajun Creole dishes. And again, this is something that you've got to learn. Once you've, once you've learned how to do this, you literally are a master at that Cajun Creole cuisine. That may take me a few more years. <laughs> it, 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 I'm always overwhelmed by it when I, when I visit and it's always so fantastic. Um, I really can't wait till this program starts. I, I see so many great things popping up at the bottom, no questions. Mr. Pike, thank you for all of your hands up for all this food areas. It sounds like you've been on the Mississippi and had a great time already. That's great. Yeah, you know, this is the, the you know, one of the other uh, ports of call that's gonna be very charming. Dara, Louisiana, again, right. majestic, beautiful oak trees, uh, moss drape, beautiful old historic homes, one of the, you know, the oldest towns along with St. Francisville in Louisiana. Um, you know, you've got that rich history there. You know, again, you're getting closer uh, towards New Orleans. You're getting even more seafood influences, blackened. Look at that color. That's amazing. Yeah, black, this is blackened redfish, another recipe. Redfish, with, okay. Uh, and it's absolutely fantastic. And that's something that a lot of people, uh, are, I think, are starting to do a little bit more of over the last few years is, is blackening their fish, blackening different uh, types of uh you know, meats and uh, seafood. And, and that really is what brings out the flavor here again, is, is using those Cajun Creole spices uh, along with that blackening technique and you've got something very unique. In Louisiana, I mean, the redfish is the fish of Louisiana. And uh, I definitely encourage you, if you've never had redfish, you gotta try the redfish uh, when you're in Louisiana because it really is unlike any other, uh, you know, fish and preparation that you're gonna have anywhere else. So you know, definitely a lot of beautiful, beautiful small places, um, you know, to grab lunch there in Darrow. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? I'm just hungry. <laughs> it's beautiful. Know, well, I've worse, never I've... had redfish, so that's really interesting. Yeah, and you're on Pacific time, so you'll still be able to have lunch after. after... <laughs> so, me being Eastern, I, I, I'm, I'm way past. You're waiting for dinner now. Yeah, and we're going to feature, you know, being able to recreate that local cuisine at home, we're going to uh, feature shrimp etouffee. You know, the, the okay. work, work etouffee in French literally means, you know, drowning, um, smothering and that's what you do with it with etouffee uh, served over with uh, you know rice it really again that holy trinity uh, you see a lot of those uh, right there that uh, was garnished over the shrimp but you have shrimp etouffee uh, oh, I personally love crawfish etouffee which you know has its own unique flavor so again something that you can create at uh, at home and really enjoy uh, great comfort food obviously but you know again something that you can make year-round ah. You know, New Orleans. What, New what Orleans. can't you say about New Orleans? Exactly. We could do a whole, you know, whole program just on New Orleans. Just on, and the music and the food <laughs> and the architecture, the music, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, where else can you wake up and go have, you know, the incredible beignets, uh, you know, down at Cafe Du Monde, walk oh. around the square, watch the city come to life, all the painters. Uh, Fried like, oysters. Around Jackson Square. Lunchtime, you know, have uh, some char grilled oysters, uh, you know, maybe have barbecue shrimp. Then dinner time, you've got, you know, you know blackened redfish, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you want to eat. But three incredible meals. Um, and hey, throw something in there in the afternoon, you know, that you might want to might want to have a have a little a half of a po' boy or share a, a po' boy with your, your significant other. And just take in all the flavors and, and eat and enjoy and try as many different flavors as you can. I love char grilled oysters in New Orleans. Um, Felix's restaurant's my personal favorite. I mean, it's just smothered in garlic and butter sauce uh, that you just want to, wow. you know, pop up with you uh, with your French bread. Of course, you get beignets. I love beignets at any time of the day, whether it's in the morning or after you leave a, a nightclub at night. You want to, you know, you're still a little hungry. It's like, hey, let's head to Cafe Du Monde. It's open. Uh, you know, around the clock, and uh, it's, it's, it's very it's just a, a, a place you have to experience. You do, yeah, yep. absolutely. And my advice: don't sit downwind. And if you've never been there, you'll know what I mean when you <laughs> take a bite and that powdered sugar rains down. You definitely don't want to be downwind. Oh, that's awesome. 
play We're never going to be able to make that at home in 20 minutes. <laughs> no, no, but you can make it at home. We actually experimented trying to make beignets uh, a week or two ago now. And uh, yeah, they didn't quite have that same taste wow. as Capricorn. So we need to work on that recipe a little bit. But <laughs> my personal favorite is barbecue shrimp. And I love Mr. B's Bistro uh, right there across from the Monte Leon. It's right there at the foot of uh, okay. a block off of Canal Street. Uh, I love Mr. B's Bistro. They even bring you a bib to put around you uh, <laughs> to place the bib on you uh, before you dig into this because this is deliciousness at its best. So what is this? This looks so, amazing. So barbecue shrimp in New Orleans is not your traditional barbecue sauce. like No, it's like, not. You know, meats, you know, ribs, pork, and all that. So here's Worcestershire sauce, black pepper, maybe crushed or uh, cracked. Uh, you may have some, uh, you know, uh, paprika that's thrown in there a little bit, but really it's Creole seasoning, uh, you know, um, Cajun seasoning, but, but really it's spicy. Um, it, it will, if, if done right, it's got a, a beautiful taste when you put it in your mouth. And then as the aftertaste hits you, it's got a, a lot of kick to it. You know, I like to say if, if you're not, crying from you know the spiciness it's not spicy enough um but it is absolutely <laughs> delicious and as you can see they're cooked with the heads on you know you, you know when you yes. cook, you, you want to leave the heads on because that just makes them more flavorable um, okay. have to peel them so you are it is messy uh hence the bib but uh you know there's nothing like uh barbecue shrimp in new orleans and i definitely love mr b's bistro the one thing we really haven't talked about that mr b's is known for but also along the river is gumbo uh, and having, again, that, that Holy Trinity, that roux. But gumbo yeah. is, is such an important dish uh, among, amongst the Creole and the, and the Cajun cuisine. So all these places that we've talked about, I guarantee you, they're going to be featuring some amazing gumbo uh, of their own. But barbecue shrimp is something that you can create, again, at home. We've got a great recipe, uh, again, that we feature Viking. Um, but in New Orleans, you got to have that barbecue shrimp. Uh, it's, it's just an absolute fantastic dish to have. Now, well, I hope so many of you try these recipes. It's hard to choose which one to start with, Richard. I mean, they're gorgeous. I know. I know. And, and I will say something that you mentioned earlier. There's a wonderful cooking school there in New Orleans that I know that we use on our pre-post land extensions, uh, which is the New Orleans School of Cooking. Um, it's, oh, fantastic. That's a good mention. Yes. Yeah. So definitely think about that um, and, and, you know, partaking in, you know, or again, purchasing our, our uh, pre or post land extension there in uh, New Orleans so you can have that included experience and go to the New Orleans School of Cooking or definitely, you know, schedule something on your own if, uh, you know, if that doesn't interest you. But uh, you really can learn how to do the roux. The last time I was there, they, they taught you how to do a roux, use the Holy Trinity. Um, right. Praline, praline candies, how to do that in your own uh, kitchen. I mean, it was really fantastic. So definitely something to consider there. Great jazz music, of course, great music scene. Uh, right. definitely recommend 21st Amendment Bar, which is kind of a, a speakeasy, roaring 20s theme. Uh, which is very unique in itself, but Fritzl's, uh, Fritzl's European Jazz Club, to me, has that true wow. blues jazz that uh, just makes you tap your, tap your foot and uh, just make you feel like you've stepped back in time in the, in the golden era of uh, that jazz music. So uh, Preservation Hall is another one, but you've got so oh, much that's beautiful too. Yeah. that, uh, yeah, so I'm going to, you know, let you talk a little bit about our onboard dining now, Michelle. Well, I think everybody's ready to go right now, Richard. <laughs> of course, those of you who've been on Viking before know that we many times match the beautiful food of the local areas on board, as well as some of our own specialties. And on the Mississippi, you're going to see the same thing. Some of the specialties of Viking teamed with the beautiful food that is along this river. And, you know, Richard's talked so much, there's so much to ask questions on about just barbecue alone, Richard, you know, between sauces and dries and each town is a little different, but isn't that magnificent? And I know that there's lots of competitions on gumbos throughout New Orleans as well, right? Absolutely. Because everybody has the best and, and then there's lots of taste of. We want to bring that magnificent journey that you had on our river or our ocean cruiser, if you're new to Viking, taste all these wonderful foods on board the ship as well by our Swiss trained chefs and enjoy the beautiful views down the Mississippi. Now this ship is not like anything else that's out there. Um, I know we're going to have some pictures for you. This is a beautiful dining room. It's a small part of just the restaurant that's on board. But in keeping with our culinary theme today, there's many other venues to try this kind of magnificent fish stews on board as well. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, of course, are always included. 
uh, beer, wine, and soft drinks with dinner and with lunch. Look at this beautiful area. Those of you who have been on river ships know when you can sit outside and have that beautiful Aquavit Terrace. Well, this is all a part of that Mississippi style. So you can dine here through three different meals, um, outdoor dining, there's inside. So if it gets a little bit warmer, there's, there's great fans blowing and you have a nice area here to sit with the, um, for a drink or even if you'd like to have your meal outside. I love having breakfast in this area, don't you, Richard? I mean, Absolutely. to Absolutely. me, that's the joy of river cruising for sure is being outside. And on our ocean ships as well that go all over the world, we have a lot of out outside dining too, al fresco, if you will. Um, this is the beautiful Explorer's Lounge that if you're used to our ocean ships, you'll recognize this look. Of course, we still are a very Scandinavian design company with the beautiful, beautiful light blues and light woods. It, everything just feels bigger and, and more beautiful. On the Mississippi, we brought in some local things like this beautiful reception area. And that is Huckleberry Finn in parts of the book up on the wall. I just love that staircase. I can't wait to see it when it really comes out in full life. And then instead of a paddle wheel on the back, we have this beautiful infinity lap pool. And I mean, I wish I could hear all of you ooing and owing right now because there is just something so special about the Viking Mississippi, about what we're going to bring to, to these wonderful destinations. And we're thrilled and thank you and all of your travel advisors who have shown such interest in this already. Um, of course, the staterooms are fantastic. Seven different categories ranging from 300 square feet all the way up to over a thousand. All outside categories, just like all of our other products on river and on ocean around the world. And, you know, it's hard to choose because I love every single one of these categories, again, with the brightness and the big windows. And when you have small spaces to design in, it's very important that you make it all feel better and bigger. And that is really what Scandinavian design is all about. It's about bringing the light inside. It's about bringing natural woods and timbers in. You'll find little rock gardens in many of the Norwegian homes. And so that is what our style is. It's fresh, it's clean, and it never distracts from the beautiful scenery that you're going by. So yeah. choose a cabin. It's hard now. I mean, we're getting very tight on space for 2022. That two-week itinerary, as I told you in the beginning, um, we couldn't believe that how fast that sold out. There might be one or two cabins here and there, but there's only a few dates uh, that that will even sail because it's very hard to do the upper and the lower all together with water and, and weather and um, operationally, it's quite challenging. But what a magnificent ship. I think that you will all enjoy this so much. Such a modern, fresh new look at how to sail on the Mississippi compared to what the ships used to be. Many years ago, and this is going back, Richard, probably 20 years ago, I worked for a company called the Delta Queen, which were old river boats with paddle wheels, and they were so authentic and, and fantastic. Yeah. But this is such a difference from that. But same beautiful ci cities to travel to, and the great experience, of course, of the food. So, right. Yeah, and I would just add, you know, these, you know, just the, the amount of light, like you mentioned, I can't stress that enough as well, because, you know, Every public room, every public space, you saw it in the, the Explorer's Lounge as well. There's, there's floor-to-ceiling glass windows. And, you know, even yeah. in state rooms, you see, you know, floor-to-ceiling glass. Uh, you know, you having all that natural light comes in, which really, I think, is, is one of the highlights of the ship. But it truly is a game changer from the variety of restaurants to the, you know, the in tour, inside sure is. The decor. But also even the, our, our state room and suite bathrooms, you know, very large, spacious, um, you know, very large heated um, floors, which is yeah, such a yeah, treat. Plenty of storage space. Yeah, I mean, they're really it is a game changer on the on the river. It is a modern way to cruise. We're bringing all the the great features of of Europe that we've learned with our Viking longships and our ocean ships, and we're bringing all the best of those um, those two designs here on the Mississippi and featuring them. And you know, uh, the demand, like you said, has been incredible. And it's been incredible. Yeah, fifteen day and, cruises and, and I. You know, know we didn't talk a lot about all the things. Sold out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's even that two-week itinerary. There's some dates in 2023 already that are very challenging to get space on. And yeah. some of the things to remember is that we did bring all of the greatness of Viking forward to this product too. So free Wi-Fi, complimentary Wi-Fi, um, like I already mentioned, beer, wine, and soft drinks with lunch and dinner included on board each day. 
uh, no one under 18, so it's still an adult-only program, even on the Mississippi. Yep. Uh, very, very, no smoking in cabins, no smoking inside yep. the vessel. She's clean and magnificent. Um, the and kitchen table. short excursion. Yeah, don't forget, we've got that one included that's short right. excursion in every, every uh, stop as well. So that's included in your cruise fare. So that's a great value right there. And like all the no's that we don't do, no casinos on board. Um, I, people always ask about casinos on the Mississippi, but that's a lot more difficult than you imagine when you go through different states. As per the Viking way, we do not have casinos on board anyhow. Yeah. But I think you're going to enjoy this. Um, the, the Kitchen Table is a terrific culinary cookbook that uh, Karina Hagen, our executive vice president of Viking, put together a year or so ago. And the, now there's a website for this now called thekitchentable.com. Take a look at it, add it to your collection of special Viking recipes. Many of the ones Richard spoke about today are not on thekitchentable.com, but if you wanna see some of the other fantastic food that's served on board the Viking ships, take a look at that. Uh, I, I absolutely love going to that website and seeing what's updated each, each month. And the other one is vikingtv.com, which, uh, Viking.tv, right? Sorry, Viking.tv. Yep, Viking yep. Wonderful, wonderful experience. If you want to see what our lecture series is about, actually hear from some of the lecturers themselves. It's a fantastic format that changes every day. Um, you can ask questions of our photographers that do our beautiful brochures. And if any of you are into the whole wonderful Downton Abbey program, there's a lot on High Clare Castle on there too, from some of the British news folks interviewing the butterfly lady and some of the groundskeepers and really, really an interesting area to look into, but it's all a part of the Viking world and we're so very proud of it. So that's viking.tv on your website. Yeah. And we thank you again for joining us. I thank Mike, our, our colleague who helps put this together. I, I hope that um, you all know from your travel advisors that we do a different destination every day, but two every day. So uh, Mike, what was this morning's feature at before we came on? We had Ryan Getaway this morning. We had Ryan Getaway. So we did Ryan in the Mississippi today. Every week, five days a week, um, we're going to be here doing something a little different with all of our different, different wonderful directors that work for Viking. We're thrilled that you joined us. We thank all of our wonderful travel advisors who brought you here for your great support. And we look forward to seeing you on board real soon. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank Bye -bye. you.